take on what you're expecting on the market today, given this downward pressure on the big miners again? The minutes which were released overnight and the Fed comments really killed uh, risk as well as gold and saying that uh, there's no need for more easing unless there's a slowing in growth. So that's all gold and silver prices down about 2%. Remember, quantitative easing is always good news in terms of risk assets, and that's been the case with QE1 as well as QE2. If we have a look at what type of impact quantitative easing has had in terms of the US market, this is the S&P 500, and you can see QE1, we saw a massive rise in terms of the US market. QE2, we started to see the rise beforehand because there was, of, of course, speculation ahead of uh, the actual quantitative easing to happening that the Fed would look at more easing and then we saw a rise and of course after QE2 finished we saw the market coming back down to earth again so the markets have been hoping for more quantitative easing it doesn't seem likely unless we do see growth slowing remarkably but we did see our risk assets down the US dollar was up by 0.6 percent overnight we saw US Treasury yields also rising by 13 basis points so that doesn't bode well for our commodity space BAP being so big is one that we're watching. $34 is the important um, level that we're watching with BHP. And if we have a look at that $34 level for BHP over the last year, you can see that over the last eight months, we've actually bounced off $34 eight times. Now, it does look like that recent downtrend over the last few months has been broken. So that would be targeting 38. But that's as long as that very strong support level of $34 holds. So this week we'll be watching that. It looks like for the time being, that's a very strong support level and hopefully that one will hold but altogether it does look like weakness on the Australian market we did see quite a big sell-off in risk assets having said that Goldman Sachs has come out and said that their additional uh, base case scenario is still for more asset purchases with June being the most likely timing point so they're still betting on more easing coming out of the US but those Fed comments were what the market was focusing in on and risk really being sold off overnight and for QBE no doubt QBE, about a month ago, we were talking about it forming an important bottoming packet pattern and breaking out of that 11.50 mark to target $14.50. And now we've seen it reaching that mark. And the technicals aren't the only thing that have been positive around QBE. If we have a look at the fundamentals as well, we've seen a relatively benign 2012 so far in terms of large losses. The credit markets also have been a positive in the year to date so far, probably helping with a gain of around about 1% uh, for QBE. And then the increase in premium that we've seen in the insurance space should start to help the second half of the year. So QBE, it's been through a lot, but the, uh, the future is looking much brighter. Um, and so a lot of analysts becoming a lot more positive on QBE's uh, outlook for the current financial year. It's good that they have come out and reiterated their uh, target, uh, and that's of the insurance profit margin of 13%. That's one of the things that the market was looking for. And we have seen analysts becoming more positive. We've seen UBS increasing their target on this stock from $14 to $15.50, expecting earnings per share growth of 8.5% this year. So all up, QBE insurance a much brighter backdrop mm -hmm. than last year. Uh, things are a little bit clearer in terms of CEO succession. We've seen that $500 million capital raising as well so it does look like the market investors a lot more positive on this stock I guess just waiting for some more good news to flow through before another leg up so we've reached our first technical zone of $14.50 mm -hmm. and now looking for a more positive backdrop to continue that rise up Julia the company saying it sees overall Australian average premium rate increases in 2012 to be in excess of 7% so uh, a pretty big hike though for consumers although it does help the company's bottom line let's just talk uh, Julia the ACCC has also suspended uh, the project clearance for the for the Loy Yang uh, power station uh, implications for AGL at this point in time, it doesn't look like there's going to be any implication. It just means that the process is going to take longer. And this is a big one for AGL Energy and a difficult one to get over the line in terms of the ACCC. If we have a look at Loy Yang, it is Victoria's largest power station. And it's also Australia's largest uh, brownfield coal mine as well, with about 1.6 million tonnes of coal. So it is a massive, uh, a massive asset to be taking control of and, uh, in fact, 100% control of. If we have a look at... Uh, uh, I guess the legal implications at the moment the federal court has imposed a 35 percent shareholder limit on AGL energy so it needs to remove that as well the competition concerns we can see 
are in focus at the moment. AGO Energy is trying to acquire the 67.5% that it doesn't own. And to do that, we did see that share issue of $850 million, as well as a subordinated note issue of $650 million. So it's already raised those funds. We need to get over the competition concerns, as well as that federal court limit of 35%. But understandably, um, the, the ACCC asking for more information, given the large sizes of this asset and the fact that it is Victoria's largest power station.